I am going to change this R21 into R12. So F12 is going to be changed as F12 vector is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q1, Q2 by R12. Because R21, this R21 can be written as what? R12 twice. Because it's square, you have to write minus twice with that becomes 1 into R12 minus R12 minus. Or you can say R21 is equal to R12 minus. So now we equate that. The F, F21 and the F12. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Then Q1, Q2, Q1, Q2. R12 square, R12 square. Here R12, here R12. And F12 vector, the modified F12 expression contains only minus. So we can equate the corresponding the left hand side of the first equation and the modified F12 equation as F12 F21 is equal to F12 and F12 has got minus on the right hand side. So from this what we have understood is when the two fine charges are kept at a distance of R, the, the forces, the quantity of the forces exchanged between the two charges are similar and equal, but they, the direction in which they are exchanged in opposite direction. That's the beauty of understanding in this vector analysis of the Coulomb's law. I hope you have understood the exchange of a direction of the force are opposite and the the quantity or the magnitude of the forces which are exchanged between the charges are equal. Now we will move to the next topic. We have principle of superposition. The next topic, the principle of superposition is a beautiful idea. Suppose the topic the diagram is not drawn in your book, but I am going to draw a diagram from which you can able to understand the principle of superposition so easily that you draw a, a, a linear line, a straight line. So place that first charge in the beginning. Similarly on the linear line, no? you can keep any number of charges, Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4 and so on. Forth. So the final charge is the, the last charges can be said as nth nth charge. And the force given by, so definitely that is the distance between this and what? R21 and the distance between Q1 to Q3 R31 and distance between this one the one first similarly the distance between the first charge and the nth charge again say R L1 so that first charge give a force under the second charge gives a force under the first charge similarly the third charge will also give a force under the first charge and fourth will also give a first charge. So you know, each and every charges which are arranged in a linear direction will give its own forces onto the first charge. So now we are going to find out what is the net charge experienced by this first charge due to all the charges. So I am going to write, uh, write the expression F1. F1 means the force experienced the first charge is equal to F12 F12 plus F13 plus F14 plus 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 F1 in. So this is, these are the force between the first and second charges and the first and third charges and first and fourth charges so we first and the nth charges. So how to write the force between the first and nth charges? As, you have, as I have explained in the earlier chapter, F12 is the force given by the second charge and the first charge. Can be done with the help of Coulomb's law, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, Q1, Q2 by R21 square into R21 cap. I hope you have understood. 1 by 4 pi epsilon Q1, Q2 by R21 square, R21. Because when you just look at these two charges, the distance, because this charge gives a force under this charge, so we have to measure the distance between this and this as R21. R because you have to measure the distance from second charge to the first charge. Similarly, you can say 
what is the force given by the uh, between the nth charge and the first charge f1n vector is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 into qn into r n1 square into r n1 cap so when you substitute in the main equation what happens in the main equation the 1 by 4 pi epsilon is a constant so you can take it out so finally, I am going to write the expression for the entire force experienced by the first charge due to all the charges. So F, F1 is equal to, what are two, two terms are constant? 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is equal to Q1, Q2 by R21 square plus in the case of a 1 and third charge. Q1 and Q3 R31 square into R31 cap. Similarly here R21 cap plus 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 and Q1 and Qn between the first and last charge R N1 square into R N1 cap. So this gives the full pledge equation for the force experienced by the first charge due to all the other charges when they are arrayed in straight line or when they are arrayed in the linear formation. Next we will go to the next topic as the electric field. Very often in the examination they will ask in a different way what is known as electric field and define electric field in intensity. So electric field is entirely different from electric field intensity. When you keep a charge, when you keep a charge, and surrounding the charge in certain region, in certain space, whose influence can be felt. So when you keep a charge in one particular place, it is understood that surrounding the charge up to certain particular region, its a effect or influence can be felt. So when you, so you want to check that whether the electric field is present around some charge, you can say this Q as a source charge. Very simple. Suppose if you want to test if there is an electricity in your house, then take a tester and insert into the plug point. Then you can see some sort of a bulb which in the tester glows. So same way, if you want to test the existence of the electric field around the source charge Q, then you take any number. So there are several number of points are there within the electric field of a source charge. Select any one of the points. As you guess, I have selected this point. You can also select here, here, anywhere you can select. And in that particular point, you place a Q naught. That Q naught is a color, a test charge. So if this is a positive charge, the test is also a test charge is also a positive. Automatically, the force of reflection will be existing. So just calculate the force. Just calculate the force. Force X it is the one coulomb of charge. Say one coulomb can otherwise be called a unit passive charge. So when you place a unit passive charge at any point within the electric field, then the force experienced by unit passive charge at your point in the electric field of the source charge will give you the electric field intensity at that point. I hope you have understood. The electric field intensity is defined as. Now I am going to say the definition for the electric field intensity, which is referred by the E. So E is equal to a force experienced by unit passive charge at a point in an electric field of a source charge. That source charge is placed, source charge is actually here, but I am going to talk about, I am going to calculate the electric field at a point, this particular point, a Q0 is placed, so divide that force by Q0. So shortly saying that the force experienced by unit passive charge place at that point will give you the electric field intensity of this source charge at that point. So this is the definition for the electric field intensity. But F is equal, what is the unit of F? F is equal to Newton. What is the unit of a charge? It's a coulomb. So the electric field has a unit of a Newton per coulomb or Nc minus 1. The important one my question. Now I am going to, I am going to tell you about what is called electric field? The electric field is a space around here, 
chart in which whose influence is felt. So, if the question is asked about what is known as electric field, it's very simple idea, a simple uh, answer that you have to give is a yeah, space around the electric charge in which whose influence is felt is called electric field. That is a general answer. But what is called electric field intensity? Electric field intensity is referred by letter E, which is defined as the force experienced by unit passive charge placed at that point. Very sharply I will answer. Okay. What is the unit of the electric field intensity? Newton per coulomb or mc minus 1. What do you mean by the electric field intensity? By measuring the electric field intensity, one can be able to get an idea about what is the strength of the electric field present at the point. So I can say shortly, the electric field intensity is a measure of the electric field. I repeat it again, the electric field intensity is the quantity of a measurement of a electric field strength at a point in an electric field. Next topic is the electric field due to a point charge. This is an important primary question. Electric field due to a point charge. So consider a point charge Q at a distance of R, I am going to select a point P. It is understood that, but in the test book it is not given in such a way that, uh, what I am going to tell you. So the Q, the point must be selected within the electric field region of a, a point charge. I repeat it again, the Q is a point charge, surrounding the point charge Q, so in some space the electric field of Q is existing. So within the electric field, a point P must be located. The point must be at a or distance from the point charge. But if I want to calculate the electric field at a point P, then as I told earlier, the test charge Q0 must be placed at a point P. First of all, if I keep unit positive charge, say plus 1 coulomb is placed at a point P. So if I don't mention about the nature of the charge, it's understood it's a positive charge. So Q point charge Q is also positive. And even the unit charge is also a positive nature. So basically the what kind of forces are forces existing between them? Yeah, the force of the at repulsion is existing between them. So now based on the Coulomb's law, F is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught Q and Q naught. So in the place of Q1, we have right Q. In the place of Q0, in the place of Q2, we have right Q0. Why? So I can say the test charge Q0 is equal to 1 coulomb. What is the distance between them? R square. So according to that, if you want to calculate the electric field, E is equal to F by Q0. So now the electric field is equal to the force expression 1 by 4 by epsilon naught into Q into Q naught by R square by the Q naught. Now this Q naught, Q naught get cancelled. So the electric field at a point P at a distance of R E is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught and Q by R square. So electric field is a vector quantity. And 1 by 4 by epsilon naught Q by R square is a scalar quantity. So how come we can equate the scalar to the vector? It is not possible. And definitely as we have followed in the Coulomb's vector analysis, we have to multiply the right hand side with the yeah, vector, unit vector quantity. So use the same symbol of R and express as a unit vector. So now the right RHS becomes a vector quantity. Now we can able to equate and we can express electric field as a vector quantity by expressing as a vector notation. So E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon and Q by R square into R cap. So this indicates the electric field has got a direction and the electric field is a vector quantity. In the case of positive charge, now itself I will stress that, in the case of positive charge, the electric field will be directed outward. The direction of the electric field will be pointing outward. In the case of a negative charge, the direction of the electric field will be towards it, will be 
pointing towards it. I repeat it again. In the case of the, the positive charge, the direction of the electric field is pointing outward, and in the case of a, a negative charge, the direction of the electric field is pointing towards it. The next topic is the electric field, electric lines of force. What is known as electric lines? We say imaginary lines of force. If you keep, you have already studied in 11th standard, when you keep a north pole and a south pole, when, now south pole, the electric lines of force starts from south to, uh, north pole and ends in south. So, similarly, when you keep your positive charge, I can say plus positive charge, isolated positive charge. So, the electric field, the electric lines of forces will be pointing outward in all directions, pointing outward in all directions. But in the case of a negative charge, isolated negative charge, I'm talking about isolated charges. So, the electric lines of force will be pointing, I have not, I have not drawn the arrow mark yet, so I have to put the arrow marks towards the charges, towards the a negative charge. So, this indicates that the electric lines of force actually is electric lines of force is directed towards in the case of negative charge, in the case of passive charge, they are directed outward. So, in the case of a, you have two charges which are kept so closely. If this is a positive few charges and this is a negative few charge. So, positive charges, negative charges. When these two charges are kept so close to that, Michael Faraday found that the electric lines of forces starts from positive and ends in negative. This is how they are moving. So, along the line, along except, except the axial line between the two charges, on top as well as the bot at the bottom, the lines of forces and whose shapes are actually curved. But it, along the axial line, the electric lines of force is very straight. I repeat it again. Except the axial line of the two charges, the electric lines of forces are actually curved and along the axial line, electric lines of force is very straight. So, Michael Faraday found that the electric is an imaginary lines, electric lines of force is an imaginary lines in which a unit positive charge tends to move. What's the meaning of that? When you just place a unit positive charge at this particular point, this, this is a positive charge, this also is a positive charge. Both unit positive charge and this positive charge are of the same type. So this will experience a repulsive force. So automatically the unit positive charge will tend to move along this line. So you should understand the meaning of a, the meaning of the line that tending to move along the path in which unit positive charge is moving. So electric lines of course is an imaginary line in which your unit positive charge tends to move along the path. Okay. Now we have to see your properties of the electric lines of course. It's a very important primary question. Many times this is repeatedly asked in the board examination. The first, there are some few points are available and say five points are there and one, the electric lines of force starts from positive charge and is terminated at the negative charge. So if this is a positive charge and this is a negative charge, so, so along the axis it goes from positive and ends in negative and just above and, and top and bottom, the electric lines of force curved and again starts from positive and ends in so first point is over and second point so likewise huge any number of lines are actually starting from positive and any negative and look at the lines they are not intersecting each other so the electrical lines of force will never intersect and third one drawing a tangential line drawing a tangential line at any point on the electrical lines of force 